So if you want to turn this into this and store it like this, then stay tuned. I'm always filming inside the office. So I thought whilst the weather is nice, I'll get out into the garden and do the intro of this video with a bit of sunshine for a change. What I'm gonna show you in this video is how I made a gaming table topper that can fit to any tabletop so that you can turn a normal table into a gaming table for your games nights. Now the one I've made is four foot by three foot. That might not be big enough for you, but so you can adjust what I've done to any size you want. But this is perfect for me as it gives me the opportunity to play three by three skirmish games and also have a big enough area for when I'm playing some bigger board games. To get straight to the point, I'm not going to show you any fancy shots of me going shopping for wood at b and I'll just put a full list of all of the materials that I've used down in the description below. And if you have any questions, feel free to get in touch with me and ask. If you do enjoy this video, please consider clicking the subscribe button. My channel is full of many different aspects of tabletop gaming, from reviews and previews all the way to building your own gaming tables and everything in between. So I'm going to start off here with just showing you some of the plans that I used to kind of sketch a few ideas out uh, and how I was going to make that table. Again, if you've got any questions, please make sure that you put them down in the comments. And if you could share this video with your gaming buddies, that really would help me out. So as you can see, it is four foot across by three foot deep. And the idea of it, as I've mentioned, is that it's just more of a board gaming table, potentially for playing some skirmish games, kind of three by three games. The idea is, is that this frame itself will all be fitted together. There'll be some side pieces on there as a bit as an extra framing around the outside and just to make it look a little nicer. And then this MDF piece won't be fitted. It won't be fixed, I should say, to this actual frame. It'll just be able to drop in. And the reason for that is, one, it just makes it a little bit more portable to be able to carry it. Uh, two, you could actually sort of texture some boards and have boards that you switch in and out. And the third reason for it is that actually, when it comes to hang it on the wall, it'll be much easier to be able to lift this out, hang it on the wall, because you'll be able to see where the fixing points are, uh, or the hanging points, and then you'll be able to drop this back in. And if all of the magnets work, then it'll just be held in with magnets. So. That's what we're up to. Next stage is now, uh, you might be able to see on camera, I'm not sure there, is I've basically marked up all of these joints so I know where everything goes together. So we'll get those screwed together uh, and we'll see what that frame's like. Okay, so now we have uh, we've built the frame now. That's all in one piece, as you can see. It's it's very light, which is exactly what I wanted, so that uh, it would be really easy to transport, um, whether it's between rooms, whether it's to store it. I mean, something like this might go down the back of a sofa, but for me, I'm going to hang it on the wall, and I'll show you why that is an uh, an option and why I think that is a good option if you're a little bit short on space, but you want to have something that you can use for your games nights. So the next stage now is to put the uh, the frame in around the edge and then that will be um, the actual frame for itself finished. The only thing that I'm considering at the moment as well is some mechanism to be able to lock it to the table. So for example, if you've only got a relatively small table and you, you lean on the end, you don't want the whole thing flipping over the top. So I'm looking at some way to maybe mount something on the sides that tuck down and kind of lock underneath the table. Let's get the edge framing done and we'll go on to the next step.
Now, as you can see, when I, this this is just a, a normal kind of IKEA desk that I, I used to do some of my filming on, and as you can see, if I, if I was to lean on it, then potentially it could kind of tilt. So what I thought I would do is I'd put some kind of mechanism on here to stop it tilting. And what I came up with was basically these hooks. So if I move this to one side and swing those down, I can then move that all the way across, swing that one down, and with a little bit of squeak in there, the table's now secure. So I can't tilt the table over now because they are hooked underneath. Now the very observant of you might have noticed that these bars here used to be slightly further in. So rather than putting extra bars in, I decided just to move them out um, so that it fits down with this particular table. And if you just want, if you don't have this problem, you don't have to worry about putting these hooks in. And again, if you were, uh, if you decide that, the, if that doesn't fit with your particular size table or you're moving it to a different table, you can still just have it up there and they fold up inside. That's where I'm up to now. That's the point at which the actual frame of it's finished now. That's, that is that that is the table now. Okay, so we're coming on to the final stages now. The, the frame is all built, uh, everything's all of these kind of uh, locking mechanisms so that it doesn't kind of tip over the table. They're all fitted now as well. And now the next bit is to fit the actual the frame to it. Um, so I've got an MDF sheet. I got a, a sort of a big, I think it was like 2400 by 1200 roughly, which is roughly eight foot by six foot. Um, and I, I got that cut in half by the, uh, the wood merchants and that was what I built the frame around. I think you saw that at the start of the video. That means I've got two of those sheets now. One of them I'm gonna drop in now so you can see how it fits and how I've secured it, which you probably would have saw on the drawing at the start, is I've put magnets into the corners of this, uh, which will then hold it and will stop it automatically falling out. So let's put that, uh, that MDF sheet in and you'll see how it looks as a gaming table. So here what I've got is, this was um, a six by four mat that to be honest wasn't getting used very much. So I've, I've cut it in half. So I've got two of these now. I could always put them back together again if I want to use a big six by four, but it fits perfectly three foot across by four foot width. And this means I can play sort of three by three skirmish games. I can use it as a base just for sort of board gaming or for card games. Uh, and I plan to probably just get a plain black one for when I'm doing filming on the channel. It also kind of deadens a little bit of the sound. If you roll dice on it, it obviously um, it deadens the sound too for, from a noise point of view. So this is how I've got it as a gaming table. But I guess the important thing is you want to see how it looks on the wall. And of course, how I fit it to the wall. So let's go over to that part. So the first thing we need to do is we need to take out this uh, the MDF sheet. And obviously because there's gaps on the bottom, you can push up from below and pop it off those magnets and then just lift it out and this is light enough for one person. So we'll put this to one side. Next thing to do is just to pull it to one side, lift those hooks up and the same on the other side too. And then this is now in a position where you can just pick it up and take it over to fit on the wall. Now how I've fitted it to the wall is with these 3M uh, Velcro strips and these take uh, quite a lot of weight. In fact, four of these will take um, seven and a half kilos. So what I've done is I put one, two, three, four, five, six of them on. 
you might be able to see I did put an extra ones at the bottom but actually this makes it quite difficult to remove from the wall so I took those ones off the wall the beauty with these are is that it's very easy to make sure that it's secure to the wall it makes it a one person job and it also doesn't cause any damage to your walls as well so let's go and there uh, and pot it up there now you can see that I've already got these um, stickers on the wall here essentially what you do is you put the two together you stick them to the back of the frame you then push them up against the wall and obviously use a spirit level to make sure it's all level um, that will then um, stick them to the wall take it off and leave those pads actually stuck to the wall for about an hour and that lets them stick really strongly then what you can do is of course because as I said before this is pretty light so one-handed you can lift this up you can align it with where the pads are get it roughly level I mean if you wanted to you could probably put a couple of pins into the wall so you know it always goes back in the same place something I might do at a later date and then basically just give it a little and you can hear the velcro just snapping into place And that keeps it in place you can see it's pretty solid there it's not going anywhere and basically you can just peel it away from the bottom to lift it back down again now let's put the MDF in place so again easy enough to like lift it up line it up in the bottom and then just make sure it's stuck onto there with the magnet so I'm going to leave it at this point however from an artwork point of view if you wanted to have something that looks a little bit nicer in your home rather than something that looks like a, a notice board there's many things you can do with this and I, the, I've ordered some stuff for mine that haven't arrived yet and um, which is why I, I haven't shown the finished article but you could just paint it a certain color you could put wallpaper on it so there kind of is a contrast against the wall behind you could buy a mural that you can bet some Kind of from ikea or from online and you can stick it to this mdf sheet and then it actually will look like some form of, of artwork you could even go and buy a lord of the rings map if you wanted to or something along them lines if it's for some kind of hobby room uh, I'm, i've actually bought some um, some batman artwork as this is in my hobby room so this will just look like um, a joker sort of big joker picture however what i would suggest is you might want to uh, cover it over with some um, some clear varnish just to protect it once it's up there as well obviously if you're using a gaming mat over the top it's going to be pretty much protected anyway during use but depending upon how you want to do it is entirely up to you and it will fit with the own decor of your room somebody even suggested to me if we put cork tiles on there it could be used as a notice board uh, so there's many different things that you can do to try and make it fit with the decor of your home or wherever you're going to store it so we'll take it back down and I'll show you how easy it is for it to come down again.